Okay, so uh, Nicole Blaine is a truly remarkable person. She has overcome huge, debilitating, life-threatening health issues with Neolife products. Nicole also has overcome huge life issues from trauma and highly challenging, highly difficult childhood family circumstances. She will share her story and methods she used to improve and literally transform her life from devastating, limiting circumstances to joy, love, abundance, and vibrant health. Nicole is a mother of six, has done lots of homeschooling. She co-leads with her husband, Alan, one of the fastest growing, very successful three ruby teams in Neolife North America. Nicole is a powerhouse, highly effective, highly inspiring leader. She is also delightful, very sweet and kind. Please join me in welcoming an extremely special guest, three ruby, Nicole Blaine. Um. Thank you, Bob. I was wondering, who is that that uh, he's describing? It can't be me. Thank you. That is so kind and very humbling. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Um, as you can tell, I'm outdoors at my son's um, his state cross-country race, so it's a little chilly out here, but I'm hoping you all can hear me okay, and um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. So... So you wanted me to share my, as far as my health journey, right, Bob? Right. Let's start with that. You okay. It's so amazing. Okay. So I don't know how many people, you know, know us, but yeah, I'm married to Alan Blaine. We've been married for, um, I always forget that, 27 years. <laughs> He's holding the phone behind me. He's so sweet. Uh, we have six children. We live in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we've been doing the business for about four and a half years now, um, so not very long. I've been on the products for almost 20 years. Um, I'm 47, 47, I'm sorry with the numbers, as you age, you forget, right? Um, for, I'm 47 years old now, um, and my health issues started back in my 20s. Um, I was a college athlete, played volleyball, college volleyball. And I got the mononucleosis virus, which we all know um, is Epstein bar virus. And once you, once you have that, it's in you for the rest of your life. You know, you're more susceptible to chronic illnesses. And um, Al and I got married at a very young age. I had just turned 20. And um, I could tell just uh, when I was a college athlete, my performance uh, after I got the mononucleosis virus, it just wasn't like it used to be. I would tire it out real quick. And then we got married, had three small children, pretty close together. And I just remember thinking, oh my goodness, this whole, no one told me this, you know, uh, being a mother is this challenging. It was so challenging. Um, I was tired all the time, tired to the point where I could hardly get out of bed. I could hardly cook the meals and take care of the children. And I... Um, grew frustrated, um, I was discouraged, I always wanted, I desired a big family, because my brother and I, so I wanted lots of, anyways, I thought children, and um, getting other health issues as well, uh, which was horrible, but at age 27, am I breaking up at all? A little bit, yeah, Okay. video's pretty bad. It only gets a screenshot every few seconds. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the audio up too? Is the audio breaking up too? Uh, sometimes. Uh, okay, we're trying to do the best we can. I'm sorry. Do you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay, so um, I started getting other health issues, but going back at age 27, uh, the doctor diagnosed me with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia because I was also getting pain in my leg. And um, this, you know, I remember asking the doctor, you know, what could you prescribe me? Because at the time, you know, we were naive, we didn't eat healthy, I just wanted a quick fix. And he said, there's nothing I can prescribe you. You just need to find a good supplement and protein shake. And at the time, we're living in Southern California. I went to Whole Foods Market. And I remember walking in there and feeling so overwhelmed by all the supplements and 
uh, protein shakes and I just grabbed what I, you know, thought looked good, was labeled natural, went home, took it for a few months, several months, and did not help me whatsoever. And as you can imagine, um, I became even more discouraged and frustrated. And also because I started getting other health issues, I got depression uh, really bad where I felt suicidal, I got insomnia, I was sleeping horrible, and I, severe IBS that sent me to the emergency room a few times. And then I also got exaggerated PMS, my hormones were out of whack, and it was just a vicious cycle. I re remember, you know, I had well-meaning relatives that said, here, try this, try that, whatever. <laughs> you know, they were selling, um, even went to the, at the time, that our family said was the best, holistic doctor in Southern California and got on his regimen and it did not help me whatsoever. And um, out of desperation, we had moved at this point and so I went to see a different doctor and he put me on three different prescription medication, one for the depression and he knew I didn't sleep good. He said, this depression medication is going to um, cause you not to sleep good. Um, I was already not sleeping good, right? So then he prescribed something for the insomnia. And then he prescribed something for the IBS. And I took that for a while. And I didn't like the side effects, how I felt at all. Um, so I quit. And uh, two weeks later, I had prayed, too, that you know, something would come in my life. I did not know what. I knew it was just a Band-Aid effect. It was, what it was not getting to the root of the cause of the problem. And uh, two weeks later, I, come, I go to my mailbox, come across a Christian Woman's Magazine. It had Marjorie Clark's uh, picture of her whole family who just looked so healthy and vibrant. I'm like, wow, this is so neat. So that caught my eye, and I read the article. And it talked about the science behind the products and how her health was just revolutionized. And I thought, wow, had a 1-800 number. So I went ahead and called it, got on the products. Within a few weeks, my energy levels, I noticed, were up. And in three months, the chronic fatigue was gone. In six months, everything was completely gone. And I tell you what, I have more energy now in my late 40s than I did in my 20s, which is just awesome so we're just beyond thankful for the products to me they're like i tell people like gold like i would give up my house all my possessions like neo life comes i mean god first family and then my neo life vitamins that's what i tell people they i i value them so much because i don't ever want to go back to how i used to feel i was miserable <laughs> awesome awesome <laughs> all Thank that was you, gone in six months nicole pretty much all gone six months yeah and, and i believe truly like probably everything would be gone in three months but um the clarks there are upline they shared with us you know lawrence was slowly adding stuff because we i was a little bit of a skeptic but alan was more of a skeptic and so i think he just wanted to focus on my cells getting you know them healthy and whatnot and slowly add in the salmon oil the chelated, chelated cow mag and you know the other stuff that i knew the beta jess for the ibs all i took was beta jess i didn't even take beta signs which is unbelievable wow. so wow yeah so you yeah. were on beta jest cow mag did you say Yes, the chelated cow mag, extra salmon oil, and back then it was a, a, a protein shake and a formula, what, what for, formula four? Yeah. Yeah. So not even like what we have now, right? Yeah. The pro vitality is way better. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thankful. Grateful. Yeah. Okay, tell us, tell us your uh, power of the mind. <laughs> yes, okay. So um, I have the notes here, and we have some runners running around. Um, so you might see runners in the background. I don't know. So, okay, mind power. I am so excited about this topic just because, you know, of my past and insecurities. And this is something that just radically changed my life. So I can't wait to share with you. But, you know, all of us have things um, in our life that we would like to change if we could. Um, if we want to improve or grow in anything, um, especially this business. And the key to changing our life is changing our mind. And here's a quote that I love by Yogi Berra, a fam famous quote, and I think a lot of you maybe have heard it. It says, baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. And this business is no exception. It's either won or lost between, or in the six inches between our ears. 
Um, and it applies to everything, really, like what we're going to talk about. So today, and the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs, that's in Proverbs 23, 7. Um, and this is a truth we see in the Bible. Um, we are what we think about, right? And also, there are universal laws um, that have been applied since the beginning of creation that affect us, uh, whether we understand them or not. I think most of us would agree, for example, the law of gravity. It's happening all around us, right? Um, and I could give you an example, like a, um, a caveman or a baby or, I don't know, uh, a dog. They, they, they don't know, you know, as far as law of gravity, what's going on, but it doesn't change the fact that it's happening um, and and so same with our mind you know it's it's happening and as far as um, you know as far as well I'll go into it later but um, and also professional athletes gets me thinking too after watching this race you know seeing the number one first place winners and stuff um, and I heard some kids over talking before the race um, as far as mind power going over stuff like they're focusing and like um, and how, you know, world-class athletes, Olympic athletes, they know, they know about this. They understand it, that the universal law uh, relating to the power of the mind, uh, which is why a portion of their training involves positive vi visualization, right? Um, like visualizing the course and um, I'm going to win. I'm going to be the first place winner, you know, and I'm feeling good today and um, all the positive things. So, um, and Napoleon Hill, uh, he understood the power of vigilation back in the early 1900s when he stated, "What the mind can, what the mind, I'm sorry, what the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve." Um, and in his book, I think you've heard uh, about his book, "Think and Grow Rich." Maybe some of you have read it, um, and it's among the. So he understood this concept but it's among the top 10 best-selling self-development books of all time. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Um, in fact, over 1 million millionaires have claimed this book as the single most beneficial concept that led to their achievement success. So these are exciting principles that we're talking about here. Um, and what you think about, what you believe to be true, what you, to, what you believe to be your reality, your body will do its very best to accomplish. Whether it's true or not, um, it doesn't matter. It, it will, it's going to do it. So example um, I would give is there's a mom, you know, introducing her young little daughter and the daughter's hi hiding behind her leg. I used to do that when I was younger, hide behind my mom's leg. You know, I was very shy as a young girl. And the mom's saying, oh, this is Sally. And then say, you know, Sally, she's, she's our shy one. Um, and I've done that with our, our own kids. Oh, this is the, the you know, this is so-and-so. She's the athletic soccer player, you know. Um, so, so just given that example, you know, about Sally, what, what do you think Sally is going to grow up thinking? She's going to grow up thinking, I'm the shy one of the family. Um, and so that's what I mean here is what we believe to be true of us is oftentimes, you know, what other people told us. Um, and I know like with, with my past, you know, my brother, he put me down as a child and said, you're never going to make anything of your life. You're going to be that he called He said, I was going to be a hooker when I grew up. I mean, he was mean. And today we have a good relationship. I forgive him and love him. But, um, Anyways, yeah, he put me down, and I truly, it's sad, but um, it sounds silly, but I believe it. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to make anything of myself. I'm going to be a loser when I grow up. So that is like just a good example. Um, and, you know, schoolmates, um, it happens all the time, like in school, you know, other classmates putting kids down and then believing, you know, whatever they're saying, and it really affects them into their future. Um, so it's huge, but how it works. Okay. Let me show you this diagram. I did it last minute. I was going to print it out. So hopefully you can see it. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. It's supposed, it's my artwork. It's supposed to be an iceberg. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Okay. But as you see that the tip is, um, supposed to be right here above the water. Right. And that's, and the majority we see is underwater right here, right? Yeah. So just like our brain, it's 
10% is our conscious mind and 90% is our subconscious mind. Um, so, and what's amazing is we have approximately 4 billion neurons firing in the subconscious mind, 4 billion. Whereas we only have 2,000, 2,000 firing um, in our conscious mind. Isn't that amazing? So wow. where does that where does that make you believe where the power is? It's in the subconscious mind, right? My my hands are frozen and I'm trying to turn the page. <laughs> Please excuse me. Um, so yeah, just unbelievable. The conscious mind knows, get this, the conscious mind knows truth from reality. The subconscious mind doesn't know truth from lies. That is the reason why we could sit in a movie theater and we could watch a you know, romantic movie or a, scare, or a scary movie. We can laugh, cry, whatever the movie is, right? Uh, get these romantic feelings or you know, we can jump you know, if it's a scary movie. And that's just proof that the subconscious mind doesn't know. It doesn't know the truth. So, you know, if you think about how, how can we get scared at something we know is fake? We know it's because our subconscious mind, it doesn't know the truth. It doesn't know um, the reality or not. And um, also, you know, one thing I thought was interesting, it said, uh, your subconscious is so powerful. That's why when you're stressed, it becomes active and your thoughts don't let you sleep. I don't know if any of you uh, can relate to that, but if you're under a lot of stress and you're, you know, tossing and turning, it's because, because of that. So um, that's how powerful that subconscious mind is. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to program our subconscious minds to believe what we want it to believe. Uh, do we want it to believe that we're stupid or smart or that we're winners or losers, shy or outgoing, that we're financially successful or that we're financial uh, failures, that we're good with money or we don't know um, how to be good with money or hold on to it and, um, you know, we're just a financial failure. So, um, and it's not what our parents may have told us or like me, my brother, not what our schoolmates have told us. Uh, it's not what society or the media has told us, but it's what we want to believe, what we want to be. Um, and we must control our thoughts, um, what programs our minds to control what we, what it believes and ultimately what it does. In 2 Corinthians 2, 5, it says, take every thought captive. And right there saying take, you know, it's showing action, right? So that's just proof. We get to choose. We get to choose how we want to program our mind. I think of it kind of like a, you know, computer, reprogramming a computer. Uh, so it's not what other, others have told us. It's not what, like, my brother told me or, or you know, in someone else's case, maybe a schoolmate or whoever. Um, or themselves, really. Um, so here's an example um, that I love. Our thoughts um, that are dwelt on long enough become words. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And they can be kind of silent in our head, right? Maybe not come out directly. It could be like going over and over in our head. But our thoughts become words. Our words become actions. Our actions become habits, our habits become beliefs, and our beliefs become our destiny. So how do we uh, change all that? You wanna use your conscious mind to reprogram your subconscious mind that makes up 90% of you. And so, um, so it starts right here, our thoughts, right? And let me ask you this, what is the first thing upon waking that your brain sees or hears starting your day. That's gonna set the direction for it to follow each day. For me, it used to be the news, um, and then I stopped reading the news because it brought me down, it discouraged me. For some, it might be TV, it might be online, on their phone, you know, it might be social media. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, negativity, something that could, you know, discourage you. Um, so what do you start your day with? It will either hinder you from your goal or help you get closer to it. I don't know about you, but I want to get closer to my goal. 
And then let me ask you this. What's the last thing that you put in your mind before going to sleep? Why the brain uh, dreams, regenerates, and it creates new pathways, you know, when you're asleep. For most people, it might be the nightly news or just, you know, something negative. That's why they always say, like, when you're, you're in an um, argument with your spouse, don't go to bed angry, right? You want to work it out. And there's been times that, oh, man, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You won't sleep well. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So in our marriage, we, we try to make sure that, you know, we, and we, Al and I don't, we don't argue, but there's been times, you know, in the past, we've been married for a long time. So of course, not really perfect, but um, that, you know, you work it out right away before you go to sleep. Otherwise, I know for me in the past, you know, it's not, it's not a good thing and I don't sleep well. Um, no, back to the Bible. There's a good reason that the one who created us, I believe created us, encouraged us over and over and over again throughout the Bible to have an attitude of gratitude. In first uh, Thessalonians 5.18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. And uh, before I wake up in the morning, I try to do this every morning before my feet hit the floor. I give thanks. And um, sometimes I'll do it at night too. Like I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for my, you know, go down the list. So that's really, I encourage you all to do that before your uh, feet hit the floor. Um, and maybe before you go to sleep as well. What are some things that you're thankful for? And just go down your list. And you, your day will be completely awesome. I'm telling you, you'll be so, your mindset will change. You'll be more positive. Um, so we choose whether we see the glass half full and programming our brains to think better takes work, but the work, the work is well worth it. And positivity is all about perspective. Um, and, you know, one person might be complaining about having, um, they might be complaining about having no shoes until they see um, a little girl that's happy and she has no feet at all, right? And it's like, oh, whoa. Why am I complaining? Or, you know, one person's complaining about having pain in his legs, and then he sees a war veteran in battle. So someone's always, remember this, someone is always, always going through something more difficult than us. Uh, we can either choose the poor me or, you know, be thankful. And I believe, um, you know, we need to be thankful. We need to be all God created us to be. And this business is all about personal development put into action. Um, our level of leadership, which is the direct result of our mindset, our positivity, our worldview, and our level of gratitude. So this is um, what I recommend and something I do. And I'm going to, I think I have an example here in my uh, yeah, pocket. I do. Good. Is start each morning off and each day by first giving thanks uh, for a handful of things that come to your mind that you're thankful for. And then um, make an affirmation card on use like a four by six like this. Do you see that? That's my affirmation card, okay. right? Yes. And you're probably asking, what is that? Well, um, this is all the things that I am telling my mind I want to be. I want to be, it says, I am confident. I'm smart. I'm a great speaker. I'm a leader. I'm outgoing. And the list goes on. And it could change. Like every year it does change for me and, or I might add more. Um, so anyways, so you're reprogram reprogramming your mind by reading this, um, every morning and every night before, you know, going to bed and you want to make sure when you do it, that you keep them in the present tense. So, um, and you want to lie to yourself, <laughs> even if you don't believe it <laughs> and avoid all negative words. Correct self-talk to what you want not what you don't don't say i sorry it's freezing out here my fingers can't turn the page <laughs> and also you want to keep them personal this is for you not others so make it feel right for you uh hopefully you can hear me be precise describe your desires in detail avoid comparatives comparatives like more greater or better keep them brief the subconscious mind loves just, you know, simple and mental pictures as well. So keep them possible within the realms of possibility. And here are some final thoughts. Only share your goals and affirmations with those that will be 100% supportive. And some of you might have some big goals and dreams. Uh, but there's 
some out there, and usually it always seems like it's family members, not always, but there's some out there that, you know, might want to pop your balloon or steal your cotton candy. <laughs> so, and also another thing is be persistent and be consistent. There have been times, and I'm going to be honest with you, that I stopped when we were moving and, you know, life got busy. I stopped doing this. And guess what? I went back to square one. Um, so just like brushing your teeth, do it every morning, every night. It's so important also, you know, to be successful at anything, we have to be persistent and consistent. And it takes um, approximately one month to develop a new habit. So give yourself time. You're not going to see results right away. You could, you could. But for me, I did. It seemed like after a month is when I saw, wow. I'm changing, I'm becoming more confident. Oh my goodness, I can actually speak in front of people. I could never do this before what I'm do doing right now, you guys. Never, you know that, Bob. I mean, I still, I still have to, uh, it's still hard for me, I'll be honest with you. Um, and before I get up to speak, it's like I have to tell myself, I can speak, I'm, a, I'm not scared, I, I can do that, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I, now I'm being, not, uh, that's negative, so you don't wanna say that, but um, I am a great speaker. You know, I am a leader. I am confident. So, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. That was awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> Happy to do it. You know, um, Nicole, would you be able to read us maybe six or seven things on your card? That's really cool. This green one right here? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing is my weakness is I'm not organized. Um, so I put on here, I'm organized. Alan is extremely organized, but that is something I need to get better at. So I'm organized. I'm organized. I'm a diamond. I'm a great teacher. I'm fit and athletic. Um, people follow me. I have a great personality. I'm beautiful inside and out. God loves me. My family loves me. I'm determined. I'm fearless. I'm, I'm courageous. I'm creative. I'm patient. I'm always kind. I'm efficient with my time. I'm daring. I sleep good. <laughs> I eat healthy. Um, and on the back, I said, I'm a good mother because you know what? I'm going to give you an example. We are our oldest. I don't know if some of you know this. Um, hasn't been doing good um, into drugs and stuff. And my mind started going to the place of, I felt like a failure. I, I'm not a good mother. It's like, like voices in my head saying, you're not a good mother. And that's why she turned out this way. You're not a good mother. You're not a good mother. I'm like, oh, I need to add this on the back. So it says, I'm a good mother. And, you know, I know I'm a good mother, but isn't that, isn't that amazing? Just how powerful the mind is and that we could believe something so silly. So. Wow. Leslie has a question, Nicole. So the yes. Have the next three kids after Neolife? Yes. So, um, and that's a testimony in itself. Um, with the last three kids, they are Neolife babies. So, you know, in the womb, you know, they got Neolife. And, um, you know, I could tell the pregnancies, I, I was, oh, it was amazing. After I had them, I remember telling Alan, I feel like, you know, people from church do not need to bring me a meal. Like I could get up and cook dinner the very next day after I had the babies. There was no postpartum depression like there was with the first babies. Um, the first three babies had jaundice. The last three Neolife babies did not have jaundice. Uh, recovery time was like, boom, like it, it was insane. I was just with the first three, I, you know, I wanted people to bring me meals for the next, you know, four to six months. Um, and of course I couldn't, you know, keep the house up and clean it. And I felt, I just felt amazing with the last three and I looked better too. I just looked healthier, healthier pregnancies, healthier babies. Amazing. Amazing. That that sold me. I was already sold on Neo Life, but then after that, it's like, whoa, <laughs> Neo Life is incredible. And you hear it all the time from other moms too. Hey, hey, Nicole. You know um, how our subconscious mind is the biggest portion. So if our subconscious mind believes our neighbor or a teacher, somebody that put us down big time, negatively ourselves, 
And we can start overcoming that by telling ourselves, like you were saying, I'm organized, I'm a leader. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and I didn't give example with our, you know, when I was talking about earlier, uh, I'm going to, our, about our thoughts, our thoughts, like what we start thinking about becomes words and so forth. Remember when I was talking about that, yeah. you know, um, let me, let me go back to that. Cause I feel like it's important and I didn't give an example and I wish I did, if you don't mind. Um, okay. So, you know, I talked about our thoughts, feelings and action. Okay. Ugh. That's not it. <laughs> okay, yeah, our thoughts become words, our words become actions, our actions become habits, our habits become um, beliefs, and our beliefs become our destiny. An example, like, and, I, and I've seen it so much in this business, um, I can give you an example, like maybe we believe, like, okay, people don't well, um, in its business, but then right away we're insecure, thinking, oh, they don't, they don't like me, so we might approach them in a insecure manner right um, because we're already thinking that so then then our words become action and then our actions become habits so then we we keep approaching people in an insecure kind of awkward um way and then our uh, these habits become beliefs so then we we think this to be true of ourselves right and then uh that becomes our destiny so that, that's a, just a really good example um, that I have seen, you know, in, in doing this business, you know, um, something that I might believe myself, like in the past, I thought, oh, I'm not an Alan Blaine, you know, <laughs> he, he's bold, he's thankfully. confident. And Alan says, thankfully, he's in the background saying, thankfully, <laughs> that's sweet. But, <laughs> and I'm glad, yeah, we're different, different personalities and stuff, but and we need to embrace the different personalities. Um, but in the past, I would compare myself a lot to Alan, like, oh, I'm not bold and um, confident. And so those are some things, too, I wrote down. I am bold. I am, because I started thinking that, that I'm not bold, I'm not confident. No, 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 no. And so I had to reprogram um, my mind to believe I am. I am bold. I am. I can be just like Alan Blake. <laughs> so... And just like Alan, Alan has, and I know you guys have heard this from Alan before. He says he uh, is an introvert by nature, but an extrovert by choice. And so even with him, he's had to change his, his mindset. And you should see him now. I feel like he's more outgoing than me. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, how did that happen? Oh, he reprogrammed his mind to believe people like I'm outgoing I'm you know so it's awesome it works it works let me tell you wow so wow hey well how about in closing Nicole that was awesome we thank you so thank much you. But the, the last thing can you tell our group because um we have some new people here why is it important to go to convention why is it <laughs> oh wow because that's where leaders are born. <laughs> um, you know, if it wasn't for convention, we wouldn't even be in this business. So um, it's been what, four and a half years and we went to convention and that's where you get so much incredible training. You get to meet other incredible leaders. Um, and then it's just like a light bulb goes off. You know, you have an aha moment, like, wow. I just remember looking around going, we could do this. We could do this, you know, and they give you all the tools, you know, it's like, yes, we could do this. So for us, it, it was huge and just incredible training. You get to meet the scientists, you get to meet Kendra Brassfield and um, Jerry Brassfield. I mean, there's just nothing like it. Um, and for us, yeah, if it wasn't for that, you know, we would not be in this business. So, okay. so very, very important, right? Super important. Yeah, and super more important to meet everybody too um, that are in different teams and stuff it, the Neolife family is just incredible everyone is there to help you they want to see you succeed and that's what I love the Neolife family I love everyone smiles and everyone's joyful and just sweet it's like I look forward to it it feels like a family reunion, reunion for me <laughs> so I love it and then you also uh, just get you know a huge wealth of knowledge, just a lot of good nuggets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, lots of good nuggets. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Nicole, thanks so much. Is Alan there? Yeah, he's here. We all wanted to say yeah. hi. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. You wanna want me to hold it or, or you, yeah. He's yeah. gonna get on his phone. Thank He'll get you. on his phone. Oh. You're welcome. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you. Hi, hey, Bob. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm the I'm the guy behind the camera. <laughs> I, I I just I got the lowly job. Is that a beautiful lady, your wife? That's smart. Yeah. Isn't she amazing? <laughs> That confident leader. Yeah, that's her. Excellent speaker. Hey, hey, <laughs> congratulations on all your team success. It's so exciting to see. And I love seeing them all here on the video. Hello, everyone. I know pretty much everybody, I think. But anyway, good to see you all. Can't wait to see you all at Rally. Yeah, yeah, I'll see, I'll see you in a week. In a week, yes, sir. Seven days, six days. Yeah, OK. Thanks so much, Alan. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. You're welcome. Great seeing you all. Bye-bye.